What up? Hey, how we doing guys? So this video is not about Southwick, or it is about Southwick, but it's about the production. And a lot of you guys say you don't like when I do the videos where I mix complaining about the production with the racing. So if you, if you don't like the complaining about production, watch the other video. This video is purely based on, well, let's be honest, I'm going to make fun of Ricky quite a bit. And there's some really cool stuff that I noticed about the broadcast that could be changed. But before we get into that, I want to thank Coach Rob at Complete Med Solutions. If you're feeling down, if you're tired, if you're struggling, and you know doctors tell you nothing's wrong, go to Complete Med Solutions. They will draw your blood, and they're not just looking for like you know cancer, which is what your normal doctor would probably just be looking for. They're looking on how to optimize you and make you feel 100%. So head over to Complete Med Solutions and let them dial you in. You've got strapped goggles. The American company, yes, their goggles aren't made in America, but Unfortunately, it's just not profitable to do that. But the, the, the basis for these goggles is just pride. Uh, they take pride in America. So check out ridestrap.com. Get yourself some Let's Go Branding goggles or just some American flag goggles. Whatever suits you. Epic Garage Designs and Epic Blinds and Shutters. Yes, Epic does both shutters, blinds, and this crazy awesome garage stuff. Uh, CF7. Check out CF7. CF7 has some of the coolest... If, if you're like me and you're a bit of a nerd and you need whatever you can to be cool, hit up CF7, a surf brand that is also big into vintage motocross. So, all right, guys, let's get into this. You need people like me so you can point your fucking fingers and say, that's the bad guy. First thing I want to do is shout out our winner of the free strapped goggles. That's Roll Forever 88 and your comment that Coach Rob cured your gout and strapped made you a true American? Listen, I'm not gonna give goggles to everybody that patronizes our sponsors, but I appreciate it, I'm sorry. That's something that very well coach and the blood work thing could absolutely do that. So uh, now I wanna talk about the broadcast and some of the things that, that just kind of annoyed me. They call it playoffs when they come to Super Duper Cross. Super Duper, it's not playoffs. Playoffs are when you have a game. This is not a game. This is a race. If you want to use that term, call it race-offs. We are heading into race-offs. Race-offs, yeah, that's great. That's fine. And then you can, you can qualify that with, yeah, hey, race-offs. This is motocross's version of playoffs. But it's not, calling a race a, a playoff is like calling a motorcycle rider a motorcycle driver. It doesn't work. So... Not a big thing, but maybe fix that. And then on the starts of these races, and I'm surprised that me, Hopper, somebody hasn't mentioned this before. I always get frustrated when they cut to that really, don't get me wrong, it's a cool shot when they go low and show the guys launching out of the gate, but I can't tell where the riders are. I, I just can't. I don't know who got a good jump, who didn't. Sometimes you get lucky and see it. What they did for the second moto of the 250 class, since Hunter was way outside, they went with that overhead, I think it was a drone view, and they had, they had bubbled and showed where Hunter was. So I got to watch and see how he got pushed out on the start. They should do this at every single race. World Supercross, in particular, you should really pick this up because you have three races really quick. We don't know where everyone is. Let's stop with the cinematic. You can go back to a replay and show the cinematic start but we're trying to tell a story here. I wanna know the story of the race. You've got a race going on. And yes, sometimes it's really cool to see the cinematic shot or to see how big somebody goes on a jump, but we're really watching for the story. Where you're gonna get my attention is when you make me, me feel emotionally invested in a rider. And what I think they should do is take the top four guys and maybe a privateer or whoever they focus on on an every start, that bubble thing they did where they, they kind of put the arrow down on the rider, do that for like four or five guys. Let's watch their start. Let's see how it breaks down for that person. And, and then we can talk about, it gives you a whole new storyline of what to follow throughout the race. Once we saw Hunter get pushed out, now you know how far he came back from. Not just 20 minutes into the race going, wow, where did he come from? We know where he came from if you can show us the start and how it breaks down. Like I said, if you want to go back to that really cool cinematic, cinematic shot where they're low and, and do like three cuts down the straightaway, that's fine. Do it in the replay. When you want to tell the story and keep me engaged in your event, tell me the story about the, the guys 
then let me watch how they start so I kind of know where they're at. You know, when I watch the races, and I doubt that most everyone does this, you might, I don't know, but I always pull up the live timing and scoring because I want to know where these guys were, where they are, and how they're moving through the pack. And unfortunately, the TV broadcast sometimes misses out on a lot of really cool stories on guys with bad starts, guys with good starts of fade or when lap times jump in. Um, they do a pretty good job of that, but just change the starts. One of the most, one of the dumbest features they have in the sport is the keys to the moto. Yes, I know they, they do it in every sport. You have to do keys to the moto, keys to the fight, and you bring in your expert. You got Ricky Carmichael and James Stewart. I want to know what they think the keys of the motos are. What James did took it to a whole new level. Kick a man when he's down. Better kick him. You know, I don't promote violence, but why? You got an opportunity with Hunter these last two races. That was his key to the moto for Deegan. I love it. I love it. James Stewart is a gift to this sport. Please take advantage of him. Do not change him. He didn't give me the uh, get a good start, um, stay clean. He gave me a story. He gave me a reason. He gave me a, a, a thing to watch. The RC stuff. Ricky Carmichael, let's be honest, he's not a good speaker. He's not. He's the best dirt bike racer to do it. Yes, he had two undefeated seasons, three if you don't count moto overalls. That's crazy. The guy had, He was a national champion every single year he was a pro. He has a lot of knowledge. He just chooses not to share it. Like, for example, he said, it's so hard to speculate at one point when James asked him a question. It's not hard to speculate. It's easy to speculate. We do it all the time. Just speculate. You're a announcer. You're a color man. It's your job to speculate. I want to know what you think. Speculate for us. I want your opinion. The guy that went essentially three undefeated seasons. I want your opinion. Don't just say, oh, well, don't break. Like, what, he, what RC does is he repeats the question and then just like breaks down the question without saying anything. He gives you a politician's answer where James Stewart, Stewart gives you his opinion, right, wrong, or indifferent. I mean, he told Sexton to tuck the front end, son. Chase, you're in a borderline front. You better tuck that front end, son. I ain't lying with you. You better do something. Now you're telling him to tuck the front end. You better do something. You got it might not be over. No, you got I loved it. Is it the best advice? Probably not. I, I would strongly advise not against tucking the front end, but those are the types of things that I want to hear from the greatest riders to ever do this. That It, it was really cool. Uh, and Carmichael needs to stop qualifying his opinions. You're qualified, my man. You're qualified. Three perfect seasons, Supercross championships. You're the GOAT. You don't need to say, in my opinion, he speaks in a passive language. I think that he does that. I don't think that he's worried about giving Chase confidence. Maybe I'm wrong, and I hope that I'm wrong. We don't want a passive language. I don't want to hear you say, I think. No, no, no. You're the GOAT. You know. Or, in my opinion, or uh, it, it's, it's silly. Um, I understand when you're on a four-hour broadcast, you're going to get some things wrong. You're going to call... Jet Lawrence, Jet Reynolds, or vice versa. There's things like that are going to happen. I'm not going to be critical of that. I'm okay with it. What I'm not okay with is the pandering to political agendas while he's on there. When I say political agendas, I mean sponsors and his friends are not wanting to make anyone mad. When I watch the UFC, Joe Rogan and those guys quite often say things that the fighters don't like. And they're dealing with guys who could literally murder them. But they're going to give you their opinion. That's why you're the color guy. That's your opinion. You don't hear Joe Rogan say, yeah, I think he should take this guy down. He's like, no, this guy, he needs to take him down. It's a difference. It's a, it's a quality of broadcasting that I don't think Ricky has. You can clearly tell James has studied it. James is practicing it. And James is getting better every week. Daniel Blair, same thing. He is good at it. He practices it. And he gets better at it. I don't know if it's just not Ricky's thing. I'm okay with Ricky. If he just changed a couple things, he could actually be okay. I mean, he's the greatest of all time. We're going to listen to him, but stop qualifying it. Jeff Emig does that too. It drives me nuts. You're Jeff Emig. I don't need you to qualify your opinion. You don't say, I think. You don't say, in my opinion. You say, what it is. Just give me the answer. And some of the things that Ricky says just make me laugh. And like I said, I don't want to hold this against him. It's just funny. Uh, he called, he called something just as worse. What? Just as worse. 
That's, that's a phrase. Yeah, it's just as worse. I, I was like, what? And then uh, Justin Cooper crashed when the line got blown out. He goes, the line getting blowed out. In this corner, like, the, the line has getting blowed out. Oh, it looks like he leans the bike. I could live with that stuff if he didn't say stuff, if he didn't qualify everything. I could, I could live with those mistakes, and I think they'd actually become funny if he wasn't so bad at the other aspects of it. I mean, at, at the end of the day, when they gave uh, Hayden, or Hayden Deegan the red plate, he called him the points champion. It's real, bud. It is real. You are the points champion. Now, this is... Uh, last I checked, the points is champion is the end of the series. He's not the points champion. He's the points leader. But like I said, I can live with that if he just stops doing passive. Stop, pe stop speaking as an apology. Uh, James is perfect. I love it. Uh, but with that said, I actually enjoyed Ricky yesterday. He was pretty good. Uh, James got him to actually share some, some of that. We saw a taste of it when they started kind of podcasting in the middle and talking about, you know, what they, what they thought about how, how, you know, Jet is just toying with these guys. It's a high line, you better do something. Now you're telling them to tuck yeah, the front. you better do something. You got it plenty might not of... be over. Yeah, you... When you have the two best riders on earth going, huh? He's really doing that to these guys. Uh, it, it was fun. So anyway, guys, that's my opinion of the broadcast. And if you want the other one we're talking about the race, just go to the other video. I'm doing two today. Um, yeah, because guess what? I listen to the haters a little bit too. And I try to get better. And whether I'm getting better or not, I'm still trying. Thanks, guys. I'll catch you later. Remember, subscribe.